This is AJA Cyan. Now this feels wonderful in the hands. This is a full-on production camera which shoots 4K, shoots ProRes internal, you can output RAW out the outputs here and it's a full-blown shoulder mounted model. I'm about to do an intense interview with Angie Bellamy from AJA, find out what this one's all about. But for the moment, first take at holding it, first take at having a look at it, what can I say, I'm very excited. Scion is the product of almost five years of development. So it's been a long-term plan for us to bring a camera to market. In terms of what we wanted to do and why we wanted to do it, we felt that the market was lacking an ergonomic, lightweight camera that was able to produce the cutting edge formats, 4K, UHD, yet also cater for 2K and HD as well, give you creative frame rates, and also allow you to record a very, very good codec as a baseline as well. So we think Scion very neatly encompasses all of those objectives. Scion really is based in and around the Super 16 style camera model. For many, many years, obviously things developed towards always being shoulder mounted. And then of course the DSLR movement came along, which changed the game for everybody. It just meant that there were more accessories, more things involved to do that simple thing that we've done all these years, which is stick it on our shoulders. The subjective view of the world is very special. Um, when the Super 60mm camera came along, it changed the world. You know, we were able to run and gun with it. Whereas with 35mm, they were way too big. So we're not reinventing the wheel. I think we're just going to bring you something a little more elegant and the same lines. Scion is a 12 stops of dynamic range camera. We feature a CMOS global shutter. So that means very stable images under any lighting conditions. Built into the camera itself is an infrared cut and optical low pass filter as a combined element. These two are key in giving the character of the vibrant image that you see on the screen behind me. We believe 4K is the production format for now and later. Uh, and to record the best quality 4K, we think prime lenses are the way to go forwards, specifically positive lock PL glass. That's the way to do it. However, other, other schools of thought do exist, of course, EF, uh, B4, and so on, lots of different mounts. These are interchangeable. So since we launched at NAB, where we said there would be third parties offering these mounts, we're very proud to show MTF mounts here, so you can actually see EF glass being mounted out there. If you have Leica M glass, I believe there is another mount coming for those as well. So that's really, really exciting for us. Basically what we've done is we've created five different fronts. As you probably know, the Scion comes with a PL mount, but by removing the four screws, you can take the front plate and the mount off. And we've created plates for uh, Nikon mount, Canon EF dumb, Canon EF Electronic, Canon FD and B4. We got those up and running quite quickly. They're all ready and available and people are buying them already. It breathes a tremendous amount of life into the camera beyond PL because you can use it with so much more. If it were me, straight away I'd want that Nikon adapter because that's what I use. And I mean PL is great, there's no doubt about it. It's the cinema standard. But there's so much more out there that's not PL and a lot of us we don't have any PL glass, but we have a lot of other lenses, so I think it'll do quite a lot for the camera in making it more successful. Yeah, that definitely, especially when you consider that the um, the price of the camera is quite low. Um, so, you know, I, 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 sh I, I would suspect that the people that were thinking of getting this camera probably have a load of Nikon lenses and may not necessarily afford PL glass. So. You know, it's, it's a perfect solution for them. Talk to me about the sensor. The sensor, so the sensor is an APS-C size sensor. The APS-C size is the closest size sensor to actual real 35 millimeter movie film. So this is quite an interesting little thing that people forget. Everybody pushes towards Super 35. It is a shade smaller than Super 35, but we're not saying it's Super 35. But if you work with Super 35 lenses, it adequately covers the area needed by it. You know, you have everything you need within it. Critically, it's a global shutter, CMOS electronic global shutter. This means that we have stable images under any lighting conditions. That's massively important. Great, and now talk to me about the packs that you record onto. These sure. are AJA packs, is that's that right? That's right, yeah, that's right. So the packs themselves uh, are our own media. So we buy 
uh, media SSD drives and uh, the media drive so this is a, a pack drive so these are available in 256 and 512 gig now these slot directly into the back of the camera and in terms of how they work these are rated for 10,000 insertions now in an age where you can go and get what I would call be part of the inverted pyramid of modern production this is where you spend a chunk of money up here all the money the talent the writing the director the AC everything all the way down to fifty dollars on a hard drive or forty quid whatever you want to say it's not much when we shot film or we shot tape we didn't live in that world and I don't know what changed first things first though you, you know go back to the ergonomics this is 2.9 kilos in weight which is unrivaled for the performance of the camera we are a kilo lighter than our nearest ergonomic rival which is pretty extraordinary we feel Cyan was clearly aimed documentaries, indie films. We would have been thrilled, I think, during the concept phase to think that prestige drama would be taking this. The industry is telling us that's where it will go. It will go for prestige drama, it will go for film production. Um, we also know that due to the lightweight nature of it, it's going to get pulled into a lot more documentaries than perhaps we thought. And ENG. Give you some sense of the balance. I'm actually going to hold it out with two fingers. Right, not a heavy unit, right? Very easy to use. To show you how neutral it is, I'm gonna put it on my shoulder. Notice that I'm not fighting the weight of the camera. It's not terribly heavy. The body itself is made out of magnesium alloy. That puts the body weight at just above six pounds. When I add the handle, top handle unit, I reach about seven pounds. So a fully rigged out camera could be as light as a few pounds more, or in this case, you know, several pounds more. To show you that it's neutral, not just uh, front to back, but also side to side, you'll notice I can hold this unit like this. I'm not a terribly strong guy, so it's not a terribly demanding camera. The nice thing is the way I used to be a director of photography, this allows me to look around, see what's going on, ask for my lights to be adjusted, then I can pick my framing out. Very easy to use. So essentially, ergonomically, that was a big challenge, but it's something we thought was really important. Is it $9,000? Is that the price? $8,995, yes. That's a lot of camera for just under $9,000. I think so. What separates a $9,000 camera like this and something that's a lot more expensive? This is what I wonder. You look at the images, they look great. You look at the images from the more expensive ones, they look great. Yeah. When you look at everything and it looks great, you got to wonder, a $9,000 compared to a $50,000 yeah. camera, Where's the other $41,000 gone? It's a very good question. It's a very good question. Any camera is only going to give you a great image in the hands of somebody who is able to light something, compose an image and create something that is evocative, moving, engaging. That's very important. And I believe, as much as I believe in this camera, that's possible on any spread of budget. Amazing things have been done with tiny budgets and often people do the best work they ever do before they have the big budget. The design process, when I, I was very lucky when I came on board to work on the camera to, to see the design process uh, go back over all the documents that, that they shared with me. Extraordinary level of work and detail. You've met John Thorne many times, I know that. He's an extraordinary guy when it comes to the details. There is no quarter. It will be useful, it will be practical and functional, but it can also be beautiful. To bring in this next level will really, I hope, blow people's minds. They really will.